Hello, you beautiful souls. Welcome to your morning messages. I am Michelle, and I am here to help you with your awakening journey. And I'm going to start uh, with a book that my mom actually got me for Christmas. And um, it's by Louise Hay, who I love. And it's Heart Thoughts, A Treasure of Inner Wisdom. It's really, really awesome. So I like to close my eyes. I like to leave it up to my spirit guides and my angels to pick a page for us. So let's see, what is the message for this first day of 2022? Mm, this is so good. Okay, it says, I am worth loving. You don't have to earn love any more than you have to earn the right to breathe. And I always say this to all of my students and to all of my nieces and my nephews. I'm like, you don't need to do anything. I'm like, I just love you for breathing. So this is so perfect. It says, you have a right to breathe because you exist. You have a right to be loved because you exist. That is all you need to know. You are worthy of your own love. Don't allow your parents or society's negative opinions or popular prejudices to make you think that you are not good enough. The reality of your being is that you are lovable. Accept this and know this. When you really do, you will find that people treat you as a lovable person. And then the quote on the side says, at least three times a day, Stand with your arms open wide and say, I'm willing to let love in. It is safe to let love in. And this is such a powerful message because thank you universe for giving us this message this morning because I've done a few readings recently and it, it was all guiding women to nurture their inner child. Um, I'm going to share with you a practice that I do with them. I'm so glad this came through. I think somebody out there needs this. So please like, comment, share, do whatever you can to spread this message because I think so many people need this right now. Um, and comment below and let me know if this resonates with you. So imagine yourself at the age at which you felt the most despair. Um, maybe you felt so unsafe in your childhood. Maybe you felt unloved and rejected in your teenage years. Try to think of your little version of you at that age, right? And now wherever you're at, if you're in a space to cry, <laughs> beware, I might have you, um, feelings might be surfacing as I say these next couple sentences. So wherever you're at, I want you to envision that little version of yourself. And for me, it was when I was five years old. Okay. So I was picturing my little version of Michelle, five years old in the corner of a room facing the wall and crying and feeling so scared and so not safe and so not seen, not heard, neglected. Um, I felt so alone. And I want you to think about your inner child at that age that you were feeling this way and she's over there or he's over there crying in the corner, okay? And now I want you to come back into your body and this is you, an adult, right? And you're seeing that you know, what is your, what's your initial instinct? What are you going to do? You're going to walk over there and nurture that little kid, right? Yes. We don't want anyone suffering, especially kids. So your initial response is let me go help that little child. Well, guess what? That child is you and you need to walk over to him or her kneel down to their level or whatever height they're at. And you turn them around and you hug them so tight. And I'm even like getting shaky and I have chills as I'm saying this. And you just tell them that they're safe. I got you. Nobody's ever going to touch you again. Nobody's ever going to hurt you. I'm going to tell you that you're the most amazing person ever for the rest of your life. I'm going to hold your hand. I'm never going to leave you. And that is one of the most powerful activities or exercises that I've ever done in my life that helped me connect back to me. Because what the disconnect happens is when we're abandoning that child in the corner. We're saying, okay, see ya, go ahead and cry on your own. That's when we're looking for alcohol, we're looking for drugs, we're looking for sex, we're looking for love in all the wrong places, we're looking for money, when in reality, we need to go and meditate and we need to go within and we need to find that little, that little version of ourselves that is crying out to be seen and to be heard. And I'm getting so passionate in my throat as I'm talking about this. Um, but this is life-changing. When you can go turn that little child around, hug them and tell them that you love them and you're never gonna leave them, they're not alone and that they're safe and nobody's gonna hurt them because you have their back. That is the when, holy cow, 
everything is released. You now wake up the next morning after doing that exercise today, you're going to wake up tomorrow and you're going to feel deeply connected to you. And this little void that you had inside of you is going to be filled. You're going to feel whole. You're going to feel like you're safe and like you're protected. And here's what I want you to do after that exercise. The next day, if you can, if you're not working, pretend like you're strapping your little version of yourself in your car, in the car seat next to you. You're strapping them in and you're going to say, all right, what kind of food do you want to eat today? Where do you want to go? Do you want to go play? And I know when I did this, I, I took myself to the food store and I got Swedish fish because I used to love to eat that as a kid. And then I went and uh, played on the swings by myself. I had my AirPods in, I had my favorite music on, and I was basically doing whatever the, my little version of myself wanted to do in each present moment. I just was like, what do you want to do? And that's essentially just asking me, adult Michelle, what do I want to do? What do I want to eat? How do I want to spend my time here? And when you start living your life from that space, from that awareness, you find self-love. You find that before you say yes to something, somebody's asking you to do something, you ask your little version of yourself, do you want to do that? Do you feel tired right now? Do you want to go home? Okay, let's do that. You start talking to yourself in this way that it's so nurturing. Because think about this. If we, if you were to like <laughs> hit print on all your thoughts throughout the day, and you know, as an adult, and we haven't done this exercise, you hit print on all your thoughts, you know, how much of that would be self-criticism, self-doubt, self-hate, and then take that list and then go repeat those words to that little girl or boy that's crying in the corner. Would you say those things to them? Would you say you're ugly? You're not smart enough. You're never going to make enough money. No, we are, we have been literally abandoning our inner child, our whole adult lives. At least I did until I learned this. I was abandoning her. I was telling her she was ugly. I was telling her she'll never be successful or she'll never, um, she's not, she shouldn't be seen and she should stay small. And I don't know. I just had all, I had this story running in my head, this printout of all these negative thoughts. And then when I flipped the script of, oh my gosh, that little girl who I've been talking like that to is me. And I, what would I say to like my niece or nephew who's five or six years old? I would pump them up. I would be like, you are limitless. You can do anything in this world. You are beautiful. Let's put good food in your body. Let's teach you how to move your body so you can feel good. Let's go play in nature. And when you start talking, envisioning yourself talking like that to somebody else's child or um, a niece or nephew, and you realize, oh my gosh, I need to be saying that to myself. You can then put yourself in that position to grab yourself out of the corner, tell your little version of you that you're safe, and go nurture the heck out of them. And that is how you practice self-love. That is how you build and connect back to you and what your heart wants. And then I just got guided to pull a card. Once you do that, you are then living from this space. And I'm looking in my apartment right now and it says, this is my happy place. You are then feeling so full on the inside that no matter what chaos is going on outside of you, you know that you're strong enough that you can settle yourself. You know what you need. You know how to take care of yourself. You can protect yourself. Isn't that beautiful? My mentor, Anna Castro, she's amazing. Did one just flip? No, um, but she did that activity with me and I was sobbing on the massage table. I was like, oh my gosh, I literally have been abandoning myself. And that little version of me felt so alone my whole life. And I have a great family, but you know, when we're going through awakenings or we're going through pain in our life, we just feel alone. We feel disconnected. We feel like we're searching for love in all these relationships, or we are searching for love from one partner. And we think because we're single or maybe we're married and not in a healthy relationship that, you know, that something's wrong with us. No, you've just been abandoning your inner child. And now it's time to wake up each day asking yourself what you want to do and that's living from a whole and sovereign place okay we have the whale card and it says tenderness show compassion and forgive what needs to be forgiven so i see this as self-forgiveness we are being called to forgive ourselves for maybe not doing this sooner 
maybe, you know what I mean? Like we tend to beat ourselves up, talk about that printout of all of our thoughts. A lot of that is a lack of forgiveness. You're not forgiving yourself for past decisions. I also just got a message that um, when we've made decisions in the past, so maybe you lost some money or maybe you were, you were in a relationship and your mind is telling you, you stayed too long, you wasted time, uh-uh, no way. You were put in that situation to learn something. You were in that relationship for a reason. And I did a reading the other day with a client who she dated a guy for five years. Um, and it started when they were 18. And she was telling me about how she was at this party. And she's like, Michelle, it was so weird. She's like, I got to tell you this because I feel like you, you could break this down for me. And she said, it's like every guy at the party was coming up to her and kind of like introducing themselves and wanting to give their number to her. It's like she was attracting all of these men. She was glowing, right? And there was one guy sitting on the couch who was not doing it. And her trauma from her childhood was magnetically drawn to the unavailable, not unavailable, but the emotionally unavailable man, the man that was not expressing love. So her, her trauma in her body, what she was vibrating at that frequency was drawn to the man that was not giving her any attention. So she was saying no to all of these wonderful men who were openly expressing themselves, which is true, unconditional love. They're offering it, they're offering it. And she was like, this doesn't feel normal to me because I didn't get that from my dad. So what we get from our parents is what we look for as adults. So she was saying no to love. Basically she was saying no to love and she was saying yes to a trauma. Uh, we call it a trauma bond, not we, but I've learned it's called a trauma bond. And we go to what is comfortable. So she was comfortable growing up in a home with a dad who was amazing, but he just wasn't very expressive. He didn't always come spill her, spill his heart out to her. And he wasn't always doing things for her. And now as an adult, she wants that. She wants expressive love, but she was wondering why she was drawn to the man that wasn't. And she stayed with him for five years. So now she's in her late twenties and she's like, Michelle, why did I why did I pick him and why he was so mean? And he just, he just wasn't good for me. And she's like, why did I not see it? And she was not forgiving herself. She couldn't let it go. And in a matter of a minute of me describing that it was a trauma bond and that that's what she was comfortable with and that she shouldn't beat herself up because she needed to know what she doesn't want in the future. She was able to release that. And you could just see her light up. She was just like, she finally figured it out. She had been beating herself up this entire time, not forgiving herself, not forgiving him. And when we don't forgive other people, we're essentially drinking the poison. And I looked at my cup. We're drinking the poison and expecting other people to suffer. We're expecting other people to die when we're doing that because it's really something that we need to have a perspective shift on. Oh, my soul chose that boyfriend to teach me that lesson for that amount of time. And now I can close that chapter and take it, take those lessons with me. So that's what I got when we got the whale card and the whale also means like diving deep and then coming back up to the surface. So if you are in some sort of depression or anxiety right now, you're going to come back up to the surface. We have to go deep to be pushed to search for information, to search for answers. Why am I doing this? Why do I feel this way? And when we are diving into ourselves, we're learning, we're growing. And if you came across this video, it's because you were searching for an answer and the universe and your spirit guides and your angels, they made my video pop up on your feed so that you could hear this message right now. And if I just got the sensation that somebody's on the other end crying right now, that's good. Grab some tissues and let that shit out. You have to release it. Okay. You have to release it and you have to forgive yourself. You did not make any wrong choices in your life. Everything that's happened has led you to this moment right here, right now, watching this reading. You are awakening. You're on a path, a spiritual path of self-discovery. When I say spiritual, all that means is coming back to self-love, which is what started this reading off, these morning messages, which I'm so, I love when that stuff comes through because then I'm like, yay, I get to share a message that I know that helped me. <laughs> and I'm hoping it'll help you guys. So this was super, super powerful. I hope you enjoy these morning messages. Um, the whale is really speaking to us and it's saying like, forgive yourself, forgive other people's,
go nurture your inner child today. Start off this year being a new version of you who is ready to handle anything that comes your way. You know how to ground yourself. You know how to take care of yourself. You know what you need. Get outside in nature. Um, take your inner child out and have some fun. And know that if you are feeling stuck, please don't label yourself that. If we are telling ourselves a certain thing, we're believing it. And when we have a thought, a feeling comes next. So if you're telling yourself you're stuck, your body's going to feel stuck and you're not going to be motivated to take action to make change in your life. So as I leave you guys, thank you so much for being here and listening. And I'm so glad these messages came through because I feel like somebody out there really needed them. But what I want you to take from today, forgive yourself, forgive other people. Don't drink the poison expecting anybody else to die. Every choice you made was perfect. Every person that has hurt you was perfect. And I really want you to spend the next few days asking your inner child what he or she wants to do. You strap them in your car next to you and you take them wherever they want to go. If they want to go lay in the sun, if they want to go hiking, if they want to go um, play video games, if they want to sleep all day, be kind to yourself. And when you hit print on your thoughts at the end of each day, be proud of what's on that paper. Okay. I'm sending you guys big love. Thank you so much for being here. If you would like to book a personal reading with me, check out my description box. All the information is there. Follow me on Instagram, michelle.thornton11, and you can get more of my good energy and my love and my compassion that I feel so called to share with all of you to help you along on your journey. All right, loveys, have a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon.